Walker and Dante Lewis are the safeties. Here's the draw play. Reggie Jordan into the ballgame now, and he knocks Abdullah for about a one-yard loss. So Oregon comes out, Ken, on the first possession and establishes its defensive superiority. Well, they established right away they were going to get after the Tigers and watch them fly around. Linebacker deflects a pass. They get a sack. Watching Brian Collins. And Eric Wynn, the fullback, lined up in the slot position. Graziani dump over the middle of Whittle, and he's got room to run. Ricky Whittle looking for the outside. Stiff arms one man at the 27. Whittle then puts his shoulder into another man at the 14-yard line and has a first down. Matt Kilgrass made the tackle. And that is an outstanding formation to set up. Ricky Whittle one-on-one -on -one against the linebacker. Get your fullback out in the slot, and you get probably a better pass defender on your fullback. You've got a lesser one inside. You see number 92 pick off an old 50. Looks like Dick Butkus right there trying to cover Whittle. But that's an outstanding selection of formations to get an outstanding running back one-on-one -on -one against a basically a limited pass defender. You see number 50 there really stay with him at all. Uh, sweep to Whittle. Running north-south and into the end zone, or it's close. Yes, it's a touchdown for Ricky Whittle from 13 yards out. He kind of focused in on that pylon and managed to get to it for the score. He sure did. Number six, Kristen McLemore, did a tremendous job of staying on his man. As a matter of fact, he had a chance to turn around behind him. He saw Whittle come. He was able to sustain the block at the end zone and allow Whittle to get in for six points. Good job of blocking by everyone in that Oregon offense. That is the fifth consecutive game that the Ducks have been the first team on the board. They've led in every game. Well, the, it's been the fourth quarter that's been interesting yes, so far is. this year. They've scored on their first possession in four of their five games that I know of. Joshua Smith bangs home the point after. And with 11.26 remaining in the first quarter, the Oregon Ducks on the board first as Ricky Whittle takes it in from 13 yards out. Atkins, the man in motion. Sellers in trouble, scrambles, and doesn't go very far. Mark Schmidt, that's it, along with Derek Allen. So Schmidt, picks up the sack, his second of the year. Pretty good game last week against Stanford, five tackles in the one sack. Well, the one thing so far this season, the Ducks have come up with a pretty good amount of sacks, and their offense is really allowed far fewer than they have in the past. It's just in that turnover that's been the source of frustration. So Morales takes a hit, and then he's got a snap on the punts. And here's the punt by Pacific, and Johnson trying to get to the far outside with that speed. He's got one block, he's got two, and he could go a long way. Matt Kilgrass from Hillsboro pushes him out of bounds. So Oregon had two weeks to improve on special teams. And it looks like they've done a nice job in the punt return area. Johnson had been averaging just under 10 yards of return. I, I did not catch the number. I think it was Jensen number 38, but somebody on that wall held up. And you could see him decide, I'm not going to make the block. I don't want to do the, I don't want to clip. It's right there. Good job by Jensen. I think he would have been able to block him, but he was big guy. He is a, amazingly agile on that particular play. Second and 19. Good protection over the middle. All alone is Wilcox. He holds on this time. One move at the 15. He's down at the 11 by Nigel Burton. Well, Josh bobbled him momentarily, but held on. And Al Borges has got his tight ends in the offense today. You bet. There's a hole down the middle, and maybe part of that hole is because they're worried about McLemore on the outside. You saw Wilcox come in and do a little spin move, and evidently the defender who's responsible for him lost him at that time. Some sloppy tackling downfield. Wilcox really took off there. Good speed. One of the fastest tight ends Oregon has had in years. Eric Wynn back in as a fullback. He gets the handoff. He might have a touchdown. How do you do? Eric Wynn, the junior from Beaverton. Eric Wynn on the touchdown for the Ducks. What a thrill that must be for Eric. Reminds me of his dad, old Dick Wynn, number 44, way back when they had leather helmets here. There's nobody prouder in the stadium than his dad right now. Watch the Oregon offensive line. Great job of blocking. You see Ricky Whittle here came in and 
block his man, a linebacker. That's why you don't see any Tiger in the screen right now. There's some high stepping. So Eric Wynn with the touchdown. And the point after is good. And for Wynn, his first collegiate touchdown, and the Ducks overcome three penalties in that drive to score for the second time today. 5.21 remaining in the first quarter. Oregon leading Pacific 14-0. Another low returnable ball for Patrick Johnson. He's got to the outside. He needs one block. Eric Edwards out in front of him, and Patrick Johnson hurdles the kicker, Fleener, and that is the longest return of the year. So the Ducks doing a nice job in the punt return phase of the game today. And uh, we saw number 30, David Crump, put a crushing block on three Pacific players. You're going to see it towards the end of the play here. Good blocking. The Ducks have done a great job of setting up win. You got number 31 in there. You're not going to see the block by Crump. It's right there in the, behind the play. Eric Edwards, number four, is out there, too. The Ducks done a terrific job setting up that side. And it, they've, they've called on Johnson to beat the first guy, and they blocked everyone else. Three and a half minutes. There's the Esiason fake. Graziani going deep for McLemore. That's career touchdown number 23 for Kristen McLemore. He beat Kato Sirwanga, transfer from Sacramento State. But McLemore, who had a sensational game against Stanford, 11 catches for 166, 176 yards and a score. Well, you see, he widens the corner. The corner widens out, gives him it, that inside position, and the safety is nowhere to be seen. He's running late with his back turned. I'll tell you, one-on-one -on -one against Kristen McLemore with that much space in between, not going to cover him. So Graziani with the touchdown pass. He leads the conference in total offense, and the Ducks leading Pacific 21-0 early second period. Punish the receiver. This one is blocked by Ronnie Gibson, I believe. Ball is loose, and the Ducks, I don't know if that was a judicious play or not to come down there and touch that ball. But anyway, Ronnie Gibson gets the first punt block and I can't remember. Ken, you were talking about that. When was the last time the Ducks blocked a punt? It's it, been a it's, while. It's been a long, long time. And, and really, we were talking up here is that it's worth your while occasionally just to rush it so other people have something to go on. Now, this is an example. Just great, great penetration by Gibson. This makes up for his penalty, I'm sure. But this is a situation where players just need to get away from the yep. ball. Once it passes the line of scrimmage, it is not a free ball. It's the same as a punt. This is the Leon Lett experience that he had at the snow game. Well, the last time the Ducks blocked a punt, believe it or not, was last year against Cal, but it sure seemed like it was longer ago than that. Ricky Whittle has another 14, 15 yards. The Ducks traditionally, though, have been a punt return team as opposed to going after the punter. But today, a little bit of both. You bet. And that's going to make the punt returns Pat Johnson all the more vulnerable because people are going to have to worry about protecting their punter before they get down to to uh, cover. But that's really a great time to call the rush is after you've returned about three or four. Here's Whittle. I mean, he's he's really exploding up inside there. Good block by Malapii. Uh, Tony Graziani, we saw he just likes to stand there and watch. Throwing the ball there. 12th in the nation and 22nd in the nation in passing and total offense. Their problem this year has been turnovers. They're minus six. Graziani trying to come back across the field to McLemore. He's all alone. It's a foot race now. He's belted out of bounds by Rodney Campbell at the 18-yard line. Well, McLemore returning from the back injury of two weeks ago. Didn't look like any effects on that play. Well, we talk about crossing routes. That was a deep crossing route. You're going to watch the secondary just kind of lose track of Kristen. See the safety overran him. He slipped. And now it's just a case. Try to outrun those guys. 49 yards. So it's a 49-yard pass and run. Graziani to. And in motion is Greg Weston. Back to Abdullah. Garth White wraps him up. Oh. Oh, a two. I mean, you, you might think Asher just changed jerseys. 
They really like him on special teams. He is. Uh, we saw Willing him make a couple, yeah. a couple big hits against UCLA, but watch the speed by which he reacts to this play. And I'm sure, you know, when you get to practice with or behind a great linebacker, you're going to pick up some of their attributes. Garth White looked real strong on that play. And we have an injured Oregon player. Dante Lewis at the 33. Once again, we'd like to welcome uh, Rich Brooks back to Watson Stadium and into the broadcast booth as well. Uh, first of all, Congratulations. I know that was a great honor for you in the pregame ceremonies. Well, it was, Todd, and, and Ken, uh, I think, can appreciate this. Uh, you know, it's not to have your name up over there, but uh, there's uh, a lot of players that have been running up and down these stadium steps, sweating and uh, bumps and bruises. Some great games, some some tough games here that, uh, that put uh, my name up on that field, and their name should be right along with it. Well, it's nice for uh, some of your former players and coaches to start off with a 31 nothing halftime lead we'll get back to you in a second let's get this first play as Graziani remains the quarterback for the Ducks draw play to Ricky and he pounds it out for about three yards to the 35 yard line your impressions let's take a look at some of the first half highlights coach maybe you can kind of talk about these first of all Eric Wynn a guy that's been in your program a while Hello. as we look at the statistics first downs total yards the big thing Turnovers. I know you've been preaching that with the Rams. Your team's done a great job in that department. Well, and I talked to Ricky and Tony uh, yesterday about that too, about the fumbles Ricky's been having and the three picks uh, in the first half against Stanford. So we'll get to the highlights of the first half in a minute, but uh, let's go back to the action. Second down and a long six. Shabri Hodge and McLemore are the wideouts right now. The tight end is Josh Wilcox. Tony to throw tight end Wilcox. He's been an integral part of the game plan today. He's at midfield. And for Wilcox, that is his fifth reception. Let's go back to the highlights, Coach. You can talk about some of these. Well, Eric, Eric Wynn, uh, a good tradition here. His father and uncle obviously played here. He's a walk-on who has earned his way onto the field. He played uh, some, some key minutes for us last year. Wide open drop late, Eric Wynn. And how about Kristen McLemore? He's made so many great yeah. plays over the years. But uh, what set this up, too, was a great fake by Tony Graziani. Uh, and uh, lofts it up, and, and McLemore had to wait on that just a little bit and probably uh, hurt his uh, back a little bit. So we go back to the action. They give it on the sweep. Eric Wynn showing some niftiness around the right side to the 41-yard line of Pacific. Gain of seven. And then Kenny Wheaton's interception. I mean, you, you said from day one, Kenny Wheaton has an amazing ability to make plays. That interception was highlight film material. Unbelievable. That was a great return. You remember, uh, Todd, I played him at the uh, tailback. He scored our first touchdown last year against Portland State because he has unbelievable uh, football ability and running ability. So the Ducks with the first possession here of the second half as they lead 31-0. I would think in a situation like this, uh, get your first unit another opportunity to get back on the field, start the half, and maybe see some second and third teamers after that. Here's Whittle looking for the corner. He spins away from one guy. Ricky usually uh, looks for contact, and here he spins away. Yeah, in fact, he, if he'd have made an outside cut on a couple of plays earlier in the in the first half, he might have had a longer, uh, longer runs and touchdowns. But the offensive line, I think, is doing a great job of controlling uh, uh, Pacific's front uh, today, Todd, and that's, that's what's making uh, Tony have all that time to throw and, and, and Ricky's running room and everything. I think the offensive line is doing a great job. Rich, I get the feeling you're back here more than just as a casual observer. Well, there's some guys on here that I wouldn't mind having in the next year or two, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a scouting trip, perhaps. Well, yeah, there's uh, there's some talent out here on this field, obviously, and uh, I'm, I'm just so happy that the, the players are responding and, and having uh, the, the three come from behind wins. I know the Stanford game was a tough one to lose, but they'll bounce back as they have today. Graziani spins away initially, but uh, that's a rare sack on Tony Graziani, only Graziani the seventh time an Oregon quarterback has been dropped this year. We've got to talk about your Rams, uh, the talk of the NFL these days, Coach, off to a 4-1 and one start. The reason you're here this week is because your team has a, a bit of a buy, although you play this Thursday. Yeah, we do. We have a, a Thursday game against Atlanta, against uh, June Jones and uh, Mouse Davis and J.J. Burden, some, uh, some other Oregon people. Uh, I, I really think that this will be the, uh, the key phase of our season uh, if we can get the next two games against Atlanta and the 49ers at home. Loss of three on the play, second down and 13, first possession of the third quarter. Draw play to Whittle, bounces to the outside, from room to run, fakes out one man and has about 14 yards to the Pacific 21-yard line. 
Well, there's that bounce into the outside. The tackle by Matt Kilgrass from Hillsboro, injured in the first half, but back out there for the Tigers. The Ricky shows real good vision on this one, Todd. You can see the draw play intended to go inside. David Weber does a good job pinning the outside, and then Whittle sets one tackler up, dips outside, straight arm, and busts through for a key first down. Rich, when you come back here, probably a lot of things seem the same, but is there anything that strikes you about this football team that's different at all this year? I think the speed uh, of this team is, is better than what we had a year ago even. Uh, and uh, also, uh, the uniforms are quite different. <laughs> <laughs> There's another seven for Ricky Whittle, and officially now 96, 95 yards for Ricky Whittle. Little counter trap inside, uh, nice fake uh, by Whittle to the outside, then coming back inside, and good job by Paul Wiggins downfield getting a, a key block on the linebacker. The young man that's played very well this year, Paul Wiggins from that tackle position. Second and a long three. With his third interception of the year, and he's not done. for a touchdown that was a third and one play that's as great a job of open field running as I have ever seen well he was a former high school running back and last year Kenny Wheaton scored Oregon's first offensive touchdown on a run from scrimmage this guy is unbelievable wow he's unbelievable and, and to get a replay I'll tell you what I hope the cameras were all oiled up but the tripods were going back and forth with that swivel hip running deal we need an entire new roll of tape just to get the interception. 65 yard interception by Kenny Wheaton. And he covered just about the entire Rich Books playing field to return it. And you see, he immediately knew that it was a pass play, got off in coverage. What great instincts. Watch this, folks. This is a one man show from here on out. Isaac Walker with a good block right there. Another good block there. There's a good block by Brian Collins. Brian Collins threw two blocks on that play. And then now the, the referee. <laughs> Jim Springer threw that last block. First and goal from the eight. Graziani. Touchdown. Oh. Yep. He can just about waltz in, and Graziani scores again. He scored against UCLA and now against Pacific from eight yards out. He also had Josh Wilcox wide open and uh, decided not to throw it, but Josh came back and gave a, a great peel back block to spring him into the end zone. Well, Josh didn't look too disappointed that the <laughs> ball wasn't coming. That was my chance to light somebody else up. Here's the replay. You can see that uh, nice fake. Uh, the running game's been going. Fake the belly play. Josh going across. He's wide open, but now watch Wilcox's block. Boom. He blew him up. Boy, indeed he did. So Graziani, who's a pretty good running quarterback, he's rushed for over 80 yards this year. That's net yardage. And the extra point by Joshua Smith is good. So with 10.40 remaining third quarter, the Ducks have added another score. They lead it 38 to nothing. And Coach, we say goodbye to you for now. We'll see you in Thanks, December. I'll be back Thanks, here for a game. Congratulations to Coach Brooks. That's something that uh, defensive coaches do a real good job of coaching these days. Here comes the blitz, the little inside screen almost picked off by Derek Barnes. Outside linebacker in rush position. Got his hands up there and had a chance for an interception. And if you're an Oregon defensive coach right now, you don't mind necessarily the fact that, uh, you know, Pacific is moving the plays during the course of a couple of their games, particularly the last half against Stanford. Draw play to Abdullah, nothing doing here. He is stuffed for a four-yard loss by Derek Barnes and Reggie Jordan, the two rush backers. Well, you know, one of the things Charlie Waters had talked about, Ken, was the fact that after Oregon had turned it over in a couple of games this year, he didn't think his defense responded at that point on sudden change like he had wanted them That's to. That's right. That kickoff return, 
it was almost a sudden change. He's got some business to establish that running game. First half, it was not all that awesome. Looks like that is exactly what they're going to try to do here in the third quarter. Here's the drop play to Kevin Parker. He says, hey, just give me the ball. And Parker's got 13 before he's knocked down by Nigel Burton. You know, Ricky Whittle, from the time that he returned that first, the second half kickoff, was in there very quickly, really hitting it hard inside. And I'll tell you, this guy has got the same gifts. Great speed. I'll give you a little more shake and bake than Ricky, but I, it's nice to see him at the end of the play put the head down and deliver. Well, a couple years on a good weight program, and you're going to see him become much more physical. Off returns, and then became academically ineligible. I had to go to a JC and has returned to the program. Perry Smith. He's looking deep for Patrick Johnson. This ball into that stiff win, and Johnson's got it at the 15-yard line. Several impressive things on that play, Todd. An outstanding block, point of pass protection by Bob Baldwin. Perry Smith throwing the ball distance into a very stiff win. Then Johnson going back up for the ball. See Baldwin knocking 79 out of there. This ball's into a real stiff win, and he can get up there and get after him, too. Took it away from Ray Stukes. Two. Gave the rest of the guys a chance to get there and make the play. Fleener, pretty good punt, but it was low, and Johnson has another chance to return. Oh, what a hit! Garth White trying to get it. Derek Allen trying to get it. What a hit on Patrick Johnson. Who's got the football? Oregon. Somebody go give Patrick Johnson some excedrin. Outstanding second effort by both Garth White, number 50. Curtis Moore, number Derek Allen, number 42. Watch this hit. It's right on the ball. Pow. That was a big hit by Totola. And watch number 42 in the left-hand side of your screen. He's going to go from being a blocker to trying to keep from seeing a turnover. Both he and... So it goes as negative three yards on the return. He and Garth White did a, a great extra effort here. Get that ball back. Rich Brooks commented uh, the thing he's noted is a lot more speed on this, this team here this year than they last year. Fumbled snap, that ball's still loose. And it's Oregon's ball. They force second turnover of the day. Actually didn't force it, bad center quarterback exchange. And I think it was Eric Edwards that came away with a loose pigskin. Young redshirt freshman out of Pasco, Washington. We called this blitz earlier, double trouble. You know, that that's the kind of pressure that people coming up inside can put that center knows that he's going to have to do something the quarterback wants to get out in a hurry although no Oregon player you know hit anybody to make the fumble you can't say that the presence of those safeties blitzing up the middle didn't help to, to contend although they haven't played well so far this year I want to see if they throw a little delay pass to Parker here They're looking deep, Ryan Perry Smith. He's got Christian Anderson. Touchdown! Well, it looked like he was initially looking for Parker. Parker slipped, and then he went to the next best thing, and that's throw to a wide, app, wide open tight end down the middle. I'm very impressed by the crispness of these last two drives for the Ducks. There's definitely no let up in how they're going after the Tiger defense. Good for Christian Anderson. He's finally getting a chance to play today and showing what he can do. You know, 6'5", about 260, and, you know, if he wasn't lumped behind Wilcox and Blake Spence, That's he'd be a, a big factor for the Ducks. And as it is, he probably will be somewhere down the road as well. Smith gets the point after. So Ryan Perry Smith, a touchdown pass to Christian Anderson. And with 9.18 to play, Oregon extends its lead to 45 to nothing. See from down, down close, good pass protection. There's Parker, falls down on the left-hand side of your screen. And that's a great reaction by Perry Smith to go off of him and then get the tight end down the middle. And Perry Smith throwing the touchdown pass. His first of the year. 
That's gotta feel good. Field goals in this game, but have opted to go on fourth down. Coyle showing blitz from his safety spot. Ball is loose. It's recovered by the Ducks. And that was defensive pressure forcing a turnover. I think it was Derek Barnes. David Coyle, number David 27. David Coyle that recovered. Safety blitz by number 27. David Coyle, he gets upfield. Ball should not have been pitched. You're going to see Coyle come into your picture here. He's upfield on the pitch. And that's an example of getting defensive pressure to create the turnover. Derek Barnes with a fumble recovery. You know, you like to see that from your second and third team defensive guys. A little pressure on them right there, and they responded. A new quarterback for the Ducks.